Good afternoon, everyone. Each year, Canada celebrates Music Monday, an initiative developed 26 years ago by the National Coalition for Music Education to celebrate music in schools across our country. Today, at this time, tens of thousands of students are gathering in schools and community venues across Canada, and all will sing or play the same piece of music in a variety of ways. Music Monday is a unique way of celebrating an art that is crucial to the longevity of both our future performing artists as well as our patrons of the arts. My name is Dr. Bernadette Berthelot and I am the teacher consultant for the arts for the Greater Essex County District School Board, leading this celebration today in partnership with Trevor Pittman, concert producer here at SOCA, the University of Windsor. The Coalition for Music Education was founded in 1992 when representatives of more than 20 music education organizations came together to share ideas to improve the state of music education in Canada. The coalition quickly began working with parents and other concerned citizens to address concerns about music in schools. As a result of those gatherings, a vision statement was introduced and it read, we envision Canada as a country where the lives of all children are enriched by quality school music programs and where their active participation in music is valued and supported in our communities. Their mission is to raise the awareness and understanding of the role that music education plays in Canadian culture and to promote the benefits that music education brings to young people. The official anthem chosen for this year is Hymn to Freedom by Canadian icon Oscar Peterson. This is especially significant to the Windsor area. Oscar Peterson is celebrated as one of the most prolific jazz artists of all times. He was born in Montreal and toured the world over a 60-year career as a musician. Music education and ensuring that young generations of artists always had mentors and educators was a significant aspect of Peterson's career and very important to him. Peterson realized that both his success as a performer and a believer in music education for all gave him a voice, and he took very seriously the responsibility to use his voice for good. From an early age, he spoke often for his love of his homeland of Canada, and also of the responsibility he felt his nation had to set an example for the rest of the world, especially during times of civil upheaval. He spoke of the racism he experienced while traveling in certain parts of the United States during the peak of the civil rights movement. But what he found truly unacceptable was coming home to Canada, a nation that he felt was held in very high regard globally and seeing that many of the same instances were happening here. In 1962, Peterson composed Hymn to Freedom and lyricist Harriet Hamilton penned lyrics to the song the following year beautifully embodying the message of freedom that Peterson wanted his music to convey. It wasn't long before Hymn to Freedom was adopted as an unofficial anthem of the civil rights movement, inspired completely by the work of Dr. Martin Luther King. With Windsor's significant history of the Underground Railroad and the turmoil experienced by our neighboring Detroit during the civil rights movement, we've chosen the new school of creative arts known as SOCA, as our place to sing the anthem, Hymn to Freedom. Today we celebrate with hundreds of voices of four generations of singers within the walls of this former armory's building, which is a representation of freedom for all, along with hundreds of students in the Greater Essex County District School Board who are watching this concert online right now. Today we celebrate the continuation of quality music education programs in schools and pay tribute to Oscar Peterson through voice. I now invite Mr. Dr. Bruce Kotowicz to the podium. Thank you very much, and th thank you for the introduction. On behalf of the University of Windsor School of Creative Arts, um, I would like to welcome everyone here, and I'm so proud that, that the School of Creative Arts and the University of Windsor is able to share uh, with, with all of you here in the armories, th those of you back at your, your, your schools, on this momentous occasion, as we all come to, together right now and over the, the next short while to not only celebrate music, celebrate the arts in our lives, but also share across Canada our common hymn. So again, on behalf of the University of Windsor, thank you for 
asking us to join with you for, for today. Welcome, enjoy our space, and let's raise our, our voices. Thank you so much. life has its own soundtrack, a soundtrack of songs that over time are paired with experiences and strengthen our memories of important life events. We start the soundtrack when we're born, and each one of ours is unique, displaying our individual personalities. If we're lucky, we create a symphony of experiences, sometimes falling down along the way, but always with the determination to get back up and try again. Along the way, we hear these songs and remember times of joy and heartbreak. We hear these songs and rejoice. Our life's music soundtrack has a power to transcend language, race, religion, and gender, to join with others as friends as we're transported through song. Life without music would be certainly emptier, but by introducing kids to music at a young age in schools, they can be exposed to the power of music and learn about the building blocks of music and its ability to bring people together. Music classes in schools also give children the chance to discover and use musical instruments they may not have ever learned about otherwise. This, in turn, creates a cycle which develops more complete and more musically knowledgeable community members for generations to come. Music can mean multiple things. It can make you happy or scared, sad or protected. It can send powerful messages. It can unite people or push them away. Music can express individuality or it can help people learn or keep them sane. Music means different things to different people. To me, music means happiness and togetherness. That's what I think music means.
That was the Sandwich West Public School Choir. Uh, hello, um, my name is Ileana. Um, luckily, I'm still in grade seven, and I'm the person from Dougal School who's gonna be able to talk to you about arguably the best topic ever, music and what it means to me. To start, I wanna give you all a little thing to think about, like what was the first song you ever heard or listened to? I'm 100% serious. What was the first one you ever heard? It's hard, right? Trying to choose one. There's like a list of possible candidates, but you can't just choose one. It could be that one song that you know all the lyrics to, but don't know the tune, or that one song that you know that one lyric, but don't know the name of. It's, it's crazy <laughs> how music can put you in this mindset of everything's great or everything's awful or everything is nothing and nothing is everything. Music has this gigantic power to make you happy, make you sad, make you believe something and make you change your mind about something else. Music can make you... <laughs> um, like if politicians were able to sing everything they planned, They'd either get all the votes or they'd get none. <laughs> like, no, seriously, music is this crazy thing that's been here forever, from stomping your feet to humming to just walking around and thinking of that song. It's like me, I'm pretty talkative, as you can see, and I need something to do or I go brain dead. Like, I've gotten to the habit of reading random signs like caution or Sandwich West. Like for you that may not sound very musical, but to me, I just dropped the next top charting album. <laughs> it's this great thing that can be anywhere and everywhere at the same time. And it's just depending on if you accept it. And in the 21st century, you better dang accept it. <laughs> Songs, lyrics, rhythms, pitch, life. Everything has its own beat and magically connects itself with music. Because really, we all need it.
My name is Lewis Brady, and I'm here today with Walkerville Collegiate Institute. And today we're here to celebrate music. And music can mean many things, and it can, and it can express many emotions. Music can express feelings of inner sadness and things that we cannot express with words. Music can bring people together in times of need or, can, or create happiness um, within a community. Music can mean culture, music can be our history, and music is our past, and it is our future. Uh, the idea of music is what you're feeling. It's just, it's an emotion. And it doesn't have to make sense to everyone, but to some people it will. And there's many things that music can do because it is so vast and so amazing, really. And um, I don't, there's so much I could say and such, but I have such little time, but Music is a passion, and it can be so many things, and it, music brings people together who never thought they'd be together, and it makes people feel wanted, it makes people feel included, and it makes a collective feel as one, and we don't have to be similar, we don't have to be the same, but music in schools today is one of the most important things I can imagine, because without music, I would probably be a lot sadder um, than I am. And, you know, I know it's the whole trope that all teenagers are moody and we live in our rooms and don't talk to anyone, uh, which is true, but uh, I think most importantly music gives not only teenagers but kids, young kids, the chance to express things that they couldn't do in words and it's such a vast idea and I think without it we would be lost and we need to continue to support music in our schools and not just music but arts in general um, all over the world because it is us, we are music.
time has come Send shivers down my spine Heart is aching all the time Goodbye, I've got to go Gotta leave you all behind Face the truth Thank you very much, Walkerville, Cre Walkerville Center for the Creative Arts. Oh. oh, I've never been this tall before. All right, so I was asked to speak about how music education has impacted me. Now, I've been playing music since I was seven, so that's over 10 years now, and I only have two minutes to talk about all that, so I'm gonna talk real fast. Um, well, I just got back from a trip to Halifax. It was a band trip. I bet you didn't even notice I just spent 26 hours on a bus. I know I look great. Um, well, we went to Halifax for this music festival and there were students from all across Canada gathered in one place trying to create something beautiful, united to create music. 
There was so much creative energy in the air, you could almost see the magic. Because music is magic. And that's a kind of magic you can't find anywhere else. Music is magic. Music teachers are magic. You should all take a minute today to thank your teachers. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> now, you don't get that anywhere else. That's music right there. Uh, the other thing I learned from music, or a few things, is perseverance, problem solving, all of those like keywords that they make teachers use on your report cards. I learned those for real. And those are life skills that no matter what I do in my life, I'm going to use those every single day. And that is so valuable to me. They said, how does music education impact you? And I say, I am music. You are music. Together, we are all music. And music is one of the only things that connects all people from any culture across our huge world. And if you ask me, that's pretty magical. Thank you. to see everyone here today. My name is Lily Kirkonslis, and the first musical experience that I ever had that I know of was at my very first birthday party. My family's Eastern European, so every event is a big event. 
So we had a little restaurant and there was a band and my dad held me up to the microphone and I started singing along. And that's when I think my parents should have known that their dreams of me being a doctor were down the drain. I started playing piano when I was five. We had a little electric Yamaha in our living room from the 90s. It was about a quarter tone flat, and I know because we still own it, and it is still a quarter tone flat. But it was kind of my way of understanding the world. I'd play all my favorite songs, which included Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Mary Had a Little Lamb, and Row 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 Your Boat. And that's when my mom knew that it was time to get me piano lessons. So by the time I was seven, I was playing on a real electric piano. It was pretty cool. Then I was in grade seven, and all of a sudden it was time to pick a band instrument. And I picked the trumpet. Does anyone here play in band? Yeah? So one cool thing about being in band is that we got to hang out in the music room at lunch. And you can bet that I was in the music room every single lunch period for, through grade seven and eight. Mostly because I didn't want to go outside, but also because I really did like being in the band room at lunch. That's where all my friends were, and that's where my teacher, Mr. Densham, was and it was just my safe place. It was the place that I loved the most in the whole school. High school came around, and my parents let me go to a high school with an arts program, very much like Walkerville Collegiate Center for the Arts. And it was kind of amazing, because I got to take music every single semester. I was in the vocal program, and I took some musical theater courses, and I ended up conducting a choir, and I ended up realizing that as much as my parents wanted me to be a doctor, that wasn't what I was supposed to be. I was supposed to be a musician. And they aren't disappointed about it anymore, thankfully. They actually really like that I'm out here. And out here is amazing. I came here because one of my best friends worked at a recording studio out here, and I found out that that was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Now, let's go back to the part where I was playing piano by ear at the age of five. Not only was I playing my favorite songs, but I was playing things that I could hear around me in the world. We lived in a fairly busy subdivision, so there would be cars going by all the time. So I'd try and play the notes that the cars were zooming by at on my piano. Now that I'm out in Windsor, I can hear the ships passing in the river before I go to bed every night. And I sit and I listen to those ships passing, and I don't think of them as ship horns. I don't think of them as carrying cargo elsewhere. I think of it as music. I think of it as my own personal symphony. When my friends speak to me, I notice the tones of their voice and the fact that I can recognize where they go higher and lower helps me understand what they're saying even more so than they realize. What I'm trying to say here is music is so much more than something we do to be good at or something we do because we're good at it. Music is the thing that really connects us to each other and helps us understand what everybody else is saying. You may not speak the same language, you may not come from the same place. You may not even, you know, be able to see people face to face. A lot of the people that are watching this right now aren't in this room. But music is what makes it possible for all of us to be together. So I urge you, tonight, before you go to bed, if you hear the ship horns, try to make a little symphony out of it. Don't do 
Winter Singers. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Knack. I am a singer with the Windsor Classic Chorale, and I was asked to come in today to share with you how I got started in music in my life. I don't think it matters how one gets started in music, it just matters that you get there in the end because uh, the, the rewards are really incredible. Um, I came to music a little bit later in my life than a lot of, uh, than a lot of people did, uh, and I got started in a bit of a nerdy way as well, but I was young. Uh, my mom was very musical. She was always trying to get me to play the piano. There was music in my house. She sang in choirs, and I never wanted to do that. It was always what my mom did. But eventually, I was a teenager, I was into computers, and I got my new computer, the Commodore 128. It was bigger and better than the Commodore 64. And I could program games into my computer. And I knew how to program all the graphics and move them around. Um, but then it was missing something. It was missing something that all the games, all the best games had, and all the best movies had music that played in behind everything. And so I said, well, I need to put music in there then. So I went to my mom and I said, mom, I need you to show me what this music is. So she showed me a G on the treble clef and showed it to me on our piano. And I said, great, thank you, mom. And that was it. That was all she did. I think she still regrets that I didn't give her the chance to talk to me more about music. But um, I took it from there and I taught myself piano and I taught myself how to put the music into the games. The games were awful but the music stuck with me. So now, just like in all the best games and in all the best movies, I have music running through my head all the time. <laughs> so that's it, uh, that was how I got started. So I urge all of you to keep going. Whatever music means to you right now, let it grow, let it continue, because it is so much fun. Thank you. Our countdown to, to one o'clock. 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. So if you see one of these funky cameras near you would, you, would you please look into the camera right now? Because guess what? Canada, we're coming at you. We're going to join you in singing Oscar Peterson's Hymn to Freedom. Are you folks ready here? Yeah. Let's do it.
Well, folks, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, we need to thank a few people uh, before we have to say this. It's the, the, the end of, of, of our time here. So everyone, first of all, sit down. I'll be brief. I would like to thank all my colleagues and people that I work with here at the University of Windsor for, for helping us to not only plan this event, but share this event with people all across Windsor, Essex County, and to be shared across the internet. So your family and friends, you can link them up and they can also watch this event. Also in 25 years, when, when, when we come back together, we'll be able to flash this up and you'll be able to see yourself 25 years ago, which would be so cool. <laughs> I'd also like to, to thank um, the, the uh, Greater Essex County District School Board for standing behind this. As we've heard from our speakers, the importance of music in our lives. I ask you folks to make me one promise right now. Can you? Okay, take your, your right hand, put it, put it over your heart, and say, I promise, I promise to, have music, to have music a part of my life every day. Excellent, give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Folks, I've, I've had the opportunity to, to live outside of Canada, but there's nothing like coming home, coming back to my homeland and hearing all of us of all grade levels, of all ages, of all different styles of music coming together and joining in. Trevor, thank you so much. Bernadette, thank you.